Good morning, church. Trust that you guys are doing great and that you had a great week. It was a chilly week this week, but uh, hope that you are snuggled in and warm in your house. And uh, just looking back, it's four weeks already of lockdown that we haven't seen one another gathering at church. So a month of not being together is really stretching. But um, just looking at this past four weeks, just hearing reports of people taking food for, for guys that are sick and, and just in general, just bringing gifts to one another and just saying, hi, how are you doing? And it's really heartwarming. So it's amazing to see the church in operation and just to see the guys loving one another and just showing family. And we as a, as a, a leadership just want to commend you guys and we really see that Jesus is working in your hearts and your lives. So we're excited and we know that Jesus builds his church. And uh, as a church, we can remain and stand strong in Jesus. And uh, yeah, let's kick this morning off with some worship. Um, get ready and uh, yeah, let's open up our hearts as we worship. And we're going to start this morning this way. So Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, Lord. I want to thank you, Lord, for your son, the price that Jesus has paid for us. And uh, this is our anthem, Lord God. Jesus is the King of Kings. He's the ruler of our hearts. He's the ruler of our house. He's the ruler of this city, Lord God. He's the ruler of our businesses. And this we declare and this we, we shout out from every roof, rooftop, Lord, is that Jesus is King. And this morning, Lord, we ready our hearts, we stir our hearts on, um, focusing on Jesus, our King, Lord. This morning, we commit this time to you, Jesus. We want to bless you, Lord God. We want to worship you this morning in spirit and truth. In Jesus' name, amen.
never fails What else can I say? There's so many reasons to love you Lord Jesus, how amazing it is to worship you, Lord God. Yeah, we, we stand in awe of your goodness and your presence, Jesus. And uh, yeah, Father, we just in this place of opening up our hearts to what you want to do and want to say through the message this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. Guys, I quickly want to do some uh, family news. And uh, we've got a few birthdays. This Today is Francois Brivert's birthday. Francois, a happy birthday to you. And then uh, Wednesday, we've got two birthdays. It's Bessie van Seil. And we've got little Rebecca Visus. She's turning six years old. Can you believe it? And then Thursday, the 29th, is Leticia Mahama's birthday. Hargreaves, I hope you've got a breakfast planned for your wife. And a happy birthday to you, Leticia, for this week. And then next week, Sunday, is Nadine Odea and Thailand Diersema. He's also turning six. So guys, we celebrate your birthdays with you this week. And may you have a good one. Something that I want to um, just encourage us with, and yeah, just I want to yeah, just bring as a challenge also for us as a church, is to pray together, guys. Our nation is not in a good space politically, and even in the people's hearts. There's so much division. There's so much looting, and so much things that are happening in our in our nation. And we as a church are the trendset. We need to be the one on the front foot be praying so i want to invite everyone to participate in prayer um for our, for our nation so what we're going to do is yesterday saturday between one and two there was a national day of prayer i want to say it seems like people all over the world or that knows about it are praying for south africa and we as a church has also got a responsibility to pray so what we're going to do is this afternoon five o'clock not going to have a zoom prayer meeting we're going to have a stream prayer meeting so every stream leader Five o'clock this afternoon, we're going to host a, a prayer meeting. Communication will be, will be um, on um, WhatsApp, on the Reflow Info WhatsApp group. And with this announcement, we want to say, plug in with a stream leader. We're going um, to 
details of the stream leaders are going to be available. Just check these um, uh, these numbers. Add these numbers to your to your uh, device, and ask the prayer guide, other uh, stream leaders, to add you on the group, and we're going to pray together. So this afternoon, five o'clock, we're going to have stream prayer, and we're going to pray for the nation. Um, yeah, so be encouraged with that. We'll see see you then at five on the stream group. And then we're going to continue with our new life series for this week. It depends on what the president is going to announce. We just This week we're going to continue with new life. So check that Wednesday um, is our midweek encouragement, this new life. You can download the um, PDF on, in the description below. So as I've said, it depends on what the president says tonight. Um, we're going to adjust our meet, our meet according to that. And then I'm excited to call on Yop. So Yop is going to share the word with us this morning. His first time preaching. And we're super excited, Yop. And we know that Jesus has got much more for you and Jamie in store. And uh, yeah, we're, we're open and we, we're ready to receive what you've got for us. I'd like to pray for you. Lord Jesus, thank you for Yop, Lord God. Thank you for the message that you've massaged into his heart, Lord Jesus. Thank you for, for his heart, Lord Jesus, that he is ready and available to preach, Lord God, to bring your word to us this morning, Lord Jesus. And we see greater things are yet to come, Lord God, through this couple and what you are doing, Father. So uh, we are open, we open up our hearts, we ready our hearts, and uh, Jesus, we want to make a difference in this city. We want to make adjustments in our hearts, uh, sitting under your word. But we pray that the Holy Spirit would continue to stir the word in our hearts, Lord Jesus. We bless you and we love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Carl. Um, good morning, Riverflow. Um, yeah, I always thought my, my first preach would, would be accommodated with a Mexican wave, but unfortunately, nobody is here. So, yeah, so thank you for the, uh, for the privilege to, to stand before you this morning. When Carl contacted me, um, yeah, I just felt so intimidated, but yeah, the Lord really came in and touched my heart and yeah dropped something that I hope um, I can share and that is relevant for you guys this morning um, I believe it is in line with with what was preached over the past two weeks with having a, a, a vision and um, yeah just having hope in the times we are in you know we as a church and as a family has been called for a time as this um, yeah so yeah I'm just quickly gonna pray and then then I'll start so, Lord, this morning we just declare our utter dependence on you, Lord. We just want to say thank you for your goodness, Lord, and thank you that you have called each one of us for a time such as this. Lord, make our hearts sensitive for you. Holy Spirit, come and work what you want to work in our hearts. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. So, yeah, this morning, um, once we come to salvation, we start our Christian walk. And uh, through this walk we, we go and many times receive words and, and prophecies and, and encouragements and dreams. And yeah, these, these dreams and these words we tend to hold on. And each time we get quiet and we feel um, in a good space as Christians, you know, we ponder on it. And well, that's what I do. And yeah, I always motivate myself and tell myself, you know, um, yeah, this is what the Lord has, has placed on my heart. And then other times we look at these dreams and we think there is no way this will come to, to life. There is no way that, that with my own iniquities and my shortcomings that I will be able to do this. And um, yeah, so so many times we, we see ourselves unworthy for the cause. And, uh, and I think that's an, an utter lie of the, of the enemy. Um, but let's go to scripture. Um, yeah, so this morning I would like to, to look at Gideon. Uh, old Gideon, I think I can relate to in, uh, in many ways. And uh, 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 so Gideon was an Israelite from the tribe of Manasseh. And uh, in the time of Gideon, the Israelites were oppressed to a great extent by, by Midian. Uh, and yeah, usually once a year, Midian... Uh, the Midianites would come with their allies and they would literally come and uh, devour the produce of Israel. They would come and they would steal food, 
livestock and just lay, leave Israel in waste. And uh, the Israels couldn't do anything about it. And uh, yeah, <laughs> the most intimidating thing is uh, Judges 6 verse 5 said they would come like locusts. And the Midianites and their camels were so much that they could not be counted. And uh, yeah, and then one day while Gideon was hiding away in a wine press, press threshing uh, wheat, uh, the Lord appeared to him. Yeah, so I'd like to read for you from Judges 6 from verse, verse 11 to 16. So from verse 11 to 13, it says, Then the angel of the Lord came and sat beneath the great tree at Ophrah, which belonged to Joash of the clan of Abiezer. Gideon, son of Joash, was threshing wheat at the bottom of a winepress to hide the grain from the Midianites. The angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, Mighty hero, the Lord is with you. So other translations says, the Lord is with you, O brave man. And um, you'll see later on in the scripture that it's actually the Lord uh, appearing to, uh, to Gideon. Sir, Gideon replied, if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? And where are all the miracles our ancestors told us about? Didn't they say the Lord brought us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and handed us over to the Midianites. So we immediately see um, Gideon sharing his heart and yeah, that they are really oppressed as a nation and, and I believe the rest of Israel felt the same as, as Gideon. And um, if we read in the beginning of the chapter, actually it's the own doing of Israel to be in this situation because it says that they did evil in the eyes of the Lord and he handed them over to Midian. Um, so if we read further from verse 14, um, then the Lord turned to him and said, um, go with the strength you have and rescue Israel from the Midianites. I am sending you. But Lord, Gideon replied, how can I rescue Israel? My clan is the weakest of the whole tribe of Manasseh, and I am the least in my entire family. The Lord said to him, I will be with you, and you will destroy the Midianites as if you were fighting against one man. Yeah, how familiar does this sound? You know, the Lord... Um, telling us something and we just backing up and saying, but I'm not worthy, I can't do this. But if we read further, we see that, that Gideon actually starts uh, grasping this thing that the Lord lays on his heart because he asked the Lord, you know, for a sign specifically um, and he prepares a meal for the Lord and then the Lord um, put this on an on a altar and devours the offering that Gideon brings. And now Gideon knows that, you know, God really spoke to him. He really told him, you're going to save Israel. But, but the Lord also um, starts this, this dream or this, uh, this word for Gideon with, with a small thing. He says, you know, Gideon, before you start this, um, first you're going to have to clear the idols from your own family. And um, break down the, the Baal altar and the Shira poles. And uh, then we go from there on. And, uh, and we do not see Gideon taking a brave stance. You know, he goes during the night and breaks down the altar and the poles. And uh, the next morning, there's a family mob coming to his father's house and saying, Gideon broke down these, these idols and we want him. And luckily in that, in that place, his father fends for him and tells them, but, you know, Baal should fend for himself. Um... Yeah, so we do not see a, a, a extreme bravery from Gideon, but we see an obedience. And uh, yeah, so now uh, the time breaks on for, uh, for the Midianites to, to come for their yearly harvest, for which they have not sown. And, uh, and we see the word says that the Spirit of the Lord came over Gideon. And uh, now Gideon is, is making ready for war, ready to take a stance against the Midianites. And uh, he uh, sums up the men of the north from Israel. And uh, like any normal person, he gathers every person he can. 32,000 fighting fit men uh, pitch up. And um, yeah, so the Lord tells Gideon, um, too many men, I cannot deliver Midian into your hands. So um, uh, 
we know all of a sudden uh, there's only 32,000 men against this unnumbered uh, enemy. And the Lord tells him, you know, tell all the guys who feel that they are scared, they can leave. And uh, um, the word says that Gideon sends those home trembling with fear and only 10,000 remains. Uh, so now if I were uh, Gideon, you know, I would start to, to wonder a bit. You know, at least uh, this is the God who brought them from Egypt. Well, that's the, the story that, that's being told to them. Um, this is the God that parted the Red Sea. Um, so 10,000, yeah, let's do it. And then God tells him, there's still too many men. Um, now, if you, if you think that, <laughs> that uh, 10,000 is too many against an uncountable enemy, yeah, that's, that's God economy. And now the Lord tells Gideon, um, take these men down to the water. And, you know, in my, in my thoughts, I would think Gideon would think that the Lord would baptize them now with some holy water and psych them up and um, give them each two swords or something. And the Lord tells Gideon, you know, let them drink water and send home every person who kneels down to drink water. And of that 10,000 men, 9,700 kneels down to drink water. I can't imagine what was going through Gideon's mind. You know, only 300 men uh, standing ready to, uh, to, to go up against the Midianites. And I think um, only here Gideon re really realized that God is going to deliver them. And if we read on in chapter 7 of Judges, you know that... Um, the Lord uh, defeated the Midianites without an Israelite taking up a sword. They had trumpets and they had uh, 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 flares in their hands uh, that they hid away under, under clay pots and divided up into three groups of a hundred. And the Midianites were in utter chaos, killing each other, running away. And while they were running away, you know, Israel chase them away to the borders of the country. Um, so we, we many times um, try to make our own plans. You know, if God says, uh, give us a dream or give us a prophecy or a word, we try and think in our own uh, human capacity how this thing should be rolled out. Um, and then we, if we get the dream or the vision, we decide if it can be done or not. We disqualify ourselves by looking at our own capacity, our own righteousness, our own possessions. Um, but God qualifies us not based on who we are, but based on who He is. And, uh, you know, if we, if we look at our own human capacity, we will always fall short. We will never qualify um, to do the work of God. And, um, yeah, Isaiah 64 verse 6 says the following. We are all infected and impure with sin. When we display our righteous deeds, they are nothing but filthy rags. Like autumn leaves, we wither and fall, and our sins sweep us away like the wind. So our best human efforts look like filthy rags before the Lord. Um, so many times we are called like Gideon, and we try and take the 32,000 root. Um, and God... Um, as something else in mind. Ephesians 2 verse 8 says the following from the ESV, uh, For by grace you have been saved through, through faith, and this is not by your own doing. It is a gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. And how familiar does this sound with regards to Gideon, um, that we are saved through faith and, and not by our own doing. You know, Gideon couldn't boast in any sins that he saved Israel. It was God that saved Israel through him. And it says that um, not a result of works, um, so that no one may boast. In the Amplified it says, For it is by grace, God's remarkable compassion and favor drawing you to Christ, that you have been saved, actually delivered from judgment and given eternal life through faith. And this salvation is not of yourself, not through your own effort, but it is the undeserved, undeserved, gracious gift of God. Not a result of your works, 
nor your attempts to keep the law, so that no one will be able to boast or take credit in any way for his salvation. So we see that it is by this undeserved gift on the cross, um, it is by God's grace that we can come to him, that we can come in our weakness and our failures and stand before him and, and get the commission and get the prophecy and get the word and operate from that place. Um, not by our own poor human efforts. Um, when we come to that point of surrender and know that it is not by ourselves but by God that, that we can go. We are not saved by our good works, but we are saved for good works. In Hebrews 10 verse 90 to, to 22 it says the following, um, And so, dear brothers and sisters, we can boldly e enter heaven's most holy place because of the blood of Jesus. How beautiful is that? By his death, Jesus opened a new and life-giving way through the curtain into the most holy place. And since we have a great high priest to rule over God's house, let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts, fully trusting him. For our guilty conscience have been sprinkled by Christ's blood to make us clean, and our bodies have been washed with pure water. So how beautiful is this? What an encouragement that we can come um, into the presence of God by a way that Jesus made for us. To walk in that trust um, and to come with, with sincere hearts before God. Come as you are. The Lord doesn't say, you know, fix yourself and then come. It's by Jesus' grace that we can come before the Father. Um, so yeah, what an what a encouragement that that we can come with our weaknesses, we can come with our judgment, we can come with our having outbursts of anger, we can come with all our iniquities before God and say, Lord, please change my heart and use me as you see fit. Um, so now we can, we can realize that we shouldn't be intimidated by the dreams that the Lord, Lord has for us. It's not to force it down or our works that will bring it to realize it is out of the place of weakness that we can boast in and walk in obedience. Um, and obedience starts with the small things in our lives. You know, um, some things God maybe told you long ago. Um, yeah, and you haven't responded yet. Uh, so many times we feel that we are not moving forward in our Christian walk. And many times it's just God waiting for us to respond. Uh, a friend of mine who had a, a great input into my life spiritually, one day said, you know, many times we say we do not hear the Lord's voice, but the Lord has spoken. So trace back to, to the last thing the Lord told you and see if you've, you've been obedient to that. Um, so that's some good advice that, that, that I received as a young Christian. You know, and, and once we start walking um, in obedience with the small things, the Lord can start entrusting us with bigger responsibilities. That work in, word in Luke 16 or the, uh, where Jesus speaks and says if we are faithful with the, with the little, we can be faithful with, with the big. Um, so Gideon first had to remove the idols from his own family before he could move forward to that place where, he, where he, the Lord used him to save Israel. And I sit and wonder if Gideon did not remove those idols, if he wasn't obedient, would the Spirit of God have come upon him? Um, in that moment when, when the Midianites were attacking again. Um, so this morning I would like to encourage you, know, you go sit quiet before the Lord and ask the Lord, you know, Father, what things have you told me to do and I haven't been obedient? Uh, maybe it's delivering a food parcel on, to someone you drive by every day. Maybe it's um, to spend more time with your kids. Maybe it's to to read the word to your kids. Maybe it's to pray more with your wife. Maybe this, this morning you are stuck in pornography or maybe you are looking at other men other than you are looking, otherwise than you are looking at your own husband. And, uh, and yeah, um, I really want to encourage you to, to be obedient to that voice telling you to share it, to bring it in the light towards someone. Contact someone you know you can trust and tell them, the Lord laid this on my heart and I struggled to do it. I haven't been able to be obedient to this. Um, and I really believe if we start being obedient in the small things, that, that we do not have to be intimidated by the big dreams. 
um, we get so so trapped and entangled in this world and the things that we are surrounded with, um, we always fall back to that that place of trying to be self-righteous, trying to to perform to earn the the approval of God. But that's not the place we should work from. In Romans three verse twenty-two to twenty-four, it says, "We are right." made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And this is true for everyone who believes, no matter who we are. For everyone has sinned, we all fall short of God's glorious standard. Yet, God in His grace freely makes us right in His sight. He did this through Christ Jesus when He freed us from the penalty of sin. If we can walk in, walk in the constant realization of walking in this freedom, you know, how how big a, a competitive advantage will we have in the world? Um, you know, I thought with the Olympics be around the corner, um, that's as good as the Lord telling you to swim against Chad Letlow, but he puts a jet ski for you in the swimming pool. And uh, and in worldly standards, th those rules doesn't count. It doesn't make sense. But if you walk out of that place of being in Christ, um, you know, the rules of the world doesn't count. God's rules count. His standard counts. And His word counts. The truth of His word counts. You know, Paul says about the thorn in his flesh, and the word says he, he shared it three times with God, and each time he got the same answer. And it says in 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9, from the New Living Translation, My grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. I'm going to read it again. My grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. God has such great, great plans for us. And, and the only strength and confidence we can have is His faithfulness. So this, this morning, let's boast in that, in that. Let's be dependent on Him. And let's go back to the things God called us for. Um, God wants, wants us to be Gideons this morning. He doesn't want us to be intimidated by the situation at work or school or being a parent or being a husband or wife. Um, through His power and grace, we are called to be victorious. So, just going to pray for us. Father God, thank you this morning that, uh, that our effort, Lord, will never be enough. But thank you, Lord, that our effort will never be enough. Thank you that we can submit under your grace and submit under your goodness lord and from that place lord go into this world and walk in what you have called us for thank you lord by but that by by your goodness and what you did on the cross jesus we can have such an uh, competitive advantage lord we can be the trend setters out there lord we do not have to be intimidated by the things of this world father i want to pray that that we will Walk in obedience with the small things, Lord. I want to pray that the things that you've uh, laid on our hearts, Lord, even things that we might have forgotten, Lord, that you will remind us, and Lord, that we will just walk in blind obedience, Lord, to what you have called us. Thank you, Lord, that you will make us brave in that moment. Thank you, Lord, that as you told Gideon, uh, uh, brave man, mighty man of valor, um, Lord, thank you that you call us to be brave. Um, even though we might not see it that way. Thank you, Father, that, that we can trust you. Thank you that you are just good. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. What a powerful message. Yopi, thank you so much. Greater things are yet to come. And uh, guys, we just want to encourage you. This afternoon's 5 o'clock prayer. Come and uh, join us in the stream groups. And then let's see what the president going to say tonight and we'll move from there on have a great sunday we'll see you soon cheers guys